welcome to Drive Seat and to the facelifted 2017 Seat Leon Cupra. Now the Cupra is available as a three-door SC hatchback, a five-door hatchback, and a five-door ST Estate. It's also available with either a six-speed manual gearbox or optional DSG automatic. Updates for the new car include a new front bumper, redesigned to the headlights and daytime running lights, and new LED tail lights. Under the bonnet, there's 10 more brake horsepower and 22 more pound-feet of torque. But the biggest problem this car's had is twofold. One, getting all that power through the front wheels onto the tarmac, and two, justifying its price against the Golf R. Prices start from £30,155, but that issue of traction potentially has been solved for the first time ever if you go for the estate version with the dsg gearbox you get four drive which is say it's all-wheel drive system this costs thirty-four thousand four hundred and eighty-five pounds and it comes with a nice big boot in fact it's got 587 liters of capacity a nice big flat floor with underfloor storage where also there's a space saving tire each side there's a couple of compartments and these levers to lower the back seats there's also a couple of bag hooks so loads of space for those money guzzling slobbering messes that you might have it'll take a dog or two as well so getting into the back is a little bit tighter because of the cupra sport seats but once in i've got decent leg knee and foot room and plenty of headroom it's nice how the alcantara's finished down the doors and onto the seats and these seats are supportive and very comfortable in the middle is a fold down armrest with two cup holders there's a medium size bin in the door but that's about it there's no usb connectors or anything back here the entertainment's got to come from the driver setting the cupra apart is the alcantara door trim the alcantara and leather cupra sport seats with the contrasting carbon fiber finish and these seats are really supportive and very comfortable there's a perforated leather wrapped flat bottomed steering wheel which is cupra badged some chrome trim around all the major features and some piano black trim to finish the look off for the instrument cluster there's two big dials one for the revs and one for your speed the speed one's a little bit fussy and misses key speeds such as 30 and 70 off which is a little bit disappointing in between there's a 3.5 inch screen which gives you your trip computer information new for the 2017 model is the 8 inch infotainment touch screen which is up from 6.5 inches loses a couple of dials and a few buttons to make it look all that much neater it's really clear easy to use and actually very intuitive it's also got smartphone connectivity and these two usb connectors with the tray just below the dual zone climate control one thing i do miss from it though is the zoom dial because sometimes you don't want to mess around with your fingers doing your pinch zoom you just want to turn the dial and it's much quicker so that's a little bit of an omission but other than that it's a really really good system the dual zone climate control works well and looks very neat there's the anti-slip tray a coin tray in the middle with the new electronic handbrake a couple of cup holders another tray and then the adjustable central armrest is split into three different sections there's also a reasonably sized door bin and a very good size glove box so you can really store your stuff away because it's going to get flung around once you get on the road to adjust the seat there's a pump lever down the side and a rotary dial for your backrest there's a second lever higher up which does the lumbar support the steering wheel adjusts by this lever down the side and has very decent reach and rake adjustment so most should be able to get comfortable in this lowest seating position, I've got plenty of headroom. So again, taller passengers should be able to fit in here quite well. The two litre petrol engine in the Cooper now generates 296 brake horsepower and 280 pound feet of torque. But with the four wheel drive system, it now does 0 to 62 in 4.9 seconds. That's 1.1 seconds quicker than the previous model, which just shows how much power was being wasted through wheel spin and traction control kicking in. That's absolutely phenomenal. And what's making it work is say it's four drive, their four wheel drive system, which is a Haldex VAQ system with a self-locking differential. On a combined cycle, this is claimed to return 39.2 miles per gallon and emit 164 grams per kilometer of CO2. But on our test route, we achieved around 29.5 miles per gallon over a combination of motorway driving and some fun lane driving. That could be eked out to early 30s with a light right foot. The power delivery is nothing short of explosive. Sink the right pedal, you'll hear the engine spark into life as the gears kick down at one or two and it just absolutely erupts off the line or even as you're 
halfway through your journey, there's just no time where you find there's not enough torque available or power. It's, it's absolutely phenomenally fast. The steering wheel mounted paddles on this, again, change gear really quick. And there's a manual override on the gear lever itself to go into sport mode or shift up and down. Leave it to its own devices and you'll be fooled to thinking there aren't actually any gears because it changes so smoothly, so sweetly. We just don't notice those gears swapping around. Say it's drive profile setting with dynamic chassis control gives you comfort, sport and Cupra settings. There's also an individual mode so you can set the car up to suit you. Comfort setup obviously for maximum comfort and then the suspension gets harder and the steering firmer the further you go towards Cupra whilst the engine becomes more responsive responsive on the DSG gearbox. Move from comfort to Cupra mode and it will automatically downshift a gear or two. There's also a sound actuator so when you go into Cupra mode everything starts to sound very very angry, a bit like Nicola Sturgeon on a good day. It's quite phenomenal how comfortable the Cupra is. You really expect this to be a lot firmer when you go in something like the 308 GTI which is just hard all the time. This isn't. You can drive this in no more discomfort than a standard Seat Leon. And that's really, really impressive. It's only the biggest of potholes and the most sunken of rainwater gullies that really penetrate that shield of comfort. Damping is excellent and gives it a real quality feel to the ride. The steering's then also light when you're going around town and at low speed, so it helps it be a really easy car to live with every day. But it's a progressive steering system and firms up the faster you're going. Those Cooper modes as well give it some extra weight. The steering is silky in its delivery. It's got a lovely weighting to it and feels absolutely connected to the front wheels. Gives you a little bit of feedback and goes exactly where you want. It's keen to turn in and ultra responsive. The grip on this thing is absolutely unbelievable. It sticks on brilliantly around a corner and in wet conditions. Bearing in mind this without the four-wheel drive system will spin up and have torque steer all over the place in dry conditions. This in the wet, hammering it is absolutely perfect. This will take you around corners faster than you can cope with. It's like a centrifugal force as you just edge out towards the edge of the car as you're turning. It's really quite impressive. It's just so well mounted when it corners, it stays ultra flat and just allows you to play with this and fully trust it. Visibility is excellent, all the pillars are really small and thanks to the estate and that extra glass out the back over the shoulder is brilliantly clear as well. The last Cooper was a good car, it had all the elements, but just too much power going through just two front wheels. Now you've got the four wheel drive system, that is absolutely remedied. This is epic, it can combine comfort with raucous pace and great handling. The only choice you've got to make is to save £800 over a Golf R and go for this, or whether you want that R badge or Cooper badge on the drive. Check out the website for the full review, remember to subscribe to the channel for free, and let us know in the comment section below what you think of the updated Cooper.